Hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition where it's getting a little late so I'm gonna maybe be even quieter than normal I apologize um what am I trying to get drunk so I think we will stick around on what do you call it? Ilium for now because we have a lot of we have a lot of quests here um, do we want to do? Not gonna do that yet. Let's get some more. Then we'll do what's her name, Miranda's, and then we'll help Liara potentially. We'll at least do the hacking mission. I don't want to do the layer of the shadow broker yet. And I think unlike in previous game, in well, previous games, in the first game, um, you can't just, you're not essentially staying on the planet. Um, you, you are going back out into space and you need to, you know. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, is this a good squad composition? Maybe not. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's actually, yeah, we'll just max him out there. Advanced experience, I mean, life threatening wounds increases in his effect. Huh. Let's do the draw marksman. Perfect. Perfect. He's perfect. Not much more I could do. Uh, military veteran. What does Thane? He has this. The Viper. We only have one machine pistol. That's wild. Look at this. Look at this man! I'm gonna lose my mind! Why does he walk like that? I don't even... This is this is bad because um, this is gonna be really bad. This is this is the ideal time for me to take a bunch of <laughs> a bunch of photo mode pictures. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh my gosh! The detail on his skin is amazing, truly. But if when he, he's gonna do the pop collar thing, and I'm I'm gonna lose my mind, and and I'm gonna take a picture. Because it's just, it's good, it's good, it's good. I tell you what, oh, there's sometimes, sometimes you can like have a contextual overview, talking like points. The stock market debt piling up. Perhaps you need to explore. Oh, uh, capitalism! Capitalism at its greatest. Are you shorting? Not. You're insane. Yeah, well. If you come back more and more of those the dialogue like evolves. Do you have anything flashier? I want something that says I own this room. I own you. <laughs> See what we can do, sir. She's like, I, I, I can't make any promises. <laughs> uh, I don't virus. remember where half the stuff is. Immediately. Because there's no oversight. I'm going to have that asshole arrested. Oh, I know what this is. <laughs> Oops, no. Nope. Watch yourself if you go in there. Some human is causing trouble. He's demanding that I sign the place over to him. Uh, is there anything I can do? Oh no, that crap might fly on Omega, but this is Ilium. I'm hooking up security cams now. If he or anybody else causes trouble, I'll have their asses arrested. I know what this is. This is not where I want to go, but I guess this is what we're doing. Oh dang, no, yeah, this is where Miranda's contact is. Listen to this. 
I still don't see why we're here. Salarians do not get married. My family simply negotiated a reproduction contract. Whatever. <laughs> it's the closest you guys get to a wedding. And that means you get a bachelor party. End of story. This woman is probably bored out of her mind listening to these guys. <laughs> and they look like they're having a business conversation. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. So then he says, Oh, it's okay. Our amino acids are all different. So it's not like we can get diseases or anything if we go natural. I'm telling you, this is why you shouldn't date humans. So then I had to explain about cross-species fluid content. Completely killed the mood. Not to mention that you're a quarian. How could he be so insensitive? The the nice guy friend. Oh boy. You're really holding out on me? I'm a man on the edge. I got nothing to lose. Uh -huh. This <laughs> I'll do anything to get the job done. I'll go all the way without a second thought. Uh -huh. So I think this may have glitched out again because I think it's supposed to be. I don't. I actually don't know because it usually glitches out for me in the regular one. Like it acts like you renegated him when in Mass Effect One when you didn't. But I don't know if that's the case here. You want to see how far I'll go? I learned how to shove a gun in people's yeah. faces from. Yeah. Yeah. This. Commander Shepard? Hey, if you know this idiot, can you rein him in before I slap his ass with a singularity? Shepard? Is it really you? It's me, Conrad Burnham. Uh, you met on the Citadel? The I wanted to become a Spectre? Yes. Oh, uh, and then yeah, you it's glitched out. In my face. It's glitched out. You showed me what it meant to be truly extreme. I learned that lesson well. So you're alive, huh? I hear it goes like that in the biz. What? Why don't you sit back and watch how it's done? I got some asses to kick. Uh, shoot his foot. See, this is the thing. It's dude, I thought they would have fixed this in the Legendary Edition, but I didn't. I paragoned my way out with him. Uh, I will continue to do so. Despite the fact, like, I, I'm sure most of you know, but wearing an N7 isn't allowed. It's not allowed unless you are a part of the N7 branch of the millet, like the N7, not a branch, but like the category. I guess N1 through 6 can't even, like, blazon any of that on their uniforms, but the N7 is the only one with the right, because it's the highest, it's the highest, like, military grade, whatever. I can't remember exactly the details, but, like, um, yeah, so wearing it will get you, if you're not even a part of that program, it will get you uh, in big trouble, potentially killed. Conrad, why are you acting like me? What, are you crazy? I'm nothing like you. I'm not a specter working for the council. Neither am I. Oh yeah, I am, actually. I'm on my own, backed only by my wits and my nerves. No rules, no laws, just whatever it takes to get the job done. How, how does he even have this armor? I'm not like you at all. Like, how does he even have an armor set that he painted an N7 onto? Although, actually, isn't there a lore somewhere where he, like, actually, like, finds a fragment of your armor? I can't remember. Conrad, do you have any actual combat training? I'm saving the galaxy, Shepard. <laughs> I don't have time for training. Don't you get it? <laughs> You're a big jerk. But you saved the galaxy and showed other races that humans mattered. And then you died. I died. The galaxy needed someone like you, Shepard. We all did. I had to do something. How'd you get that armor? Oh, they make some pretty convincing replicas these days, if you're willing to pay. Getting the whole getup was pretty expensive, but my wife was really supportive. She even paid for my shuttle fare off world. Oh, you <laughs> see the bartender in the background. <laughs> so you just wander the galaxy writing wrongs? Hey, don't say it like that. I talk to people, you know? Ask them if they have big problems that only I can solve. You'd be surprised how many people are just waiting for someone to talk to them. Sometimes I poke through crates, too. You know, for extra credits. Oh my gosh. Any decent security system will detect that you aren't in the military, much less part of my squad. I just say that I'm deep cover and don't appear on systems. I'm doing the best I can, okay? You were a hero. You saved the galaxy and, and showed you everyone what you could do. The galaxy needed mm -hmm, someone like mm -hmm. you, Shepard. We all did. I had to do something. Why were you trying to get the deed to this place? This place is actually a front for a red sand dealer. I need to take it over to crack the ring. What? Who the hell told you that? 
The owner of that weapons store near the carport? She's an undercover cop. She told me about it when I introduced oh myself. Oh my gosh. Listen, crap for brains. First, we don't sell red sand. Second, red sand is legal on Ilium. You just need a license. I'll talk to this undercover cop and figure out what's going on. Thank you. If I kill annoying customers, it usually causes property damage. That comes out of my pay. Just let me know if you need any help, Shepard. <sighs> Thanks for taking care of that crazy guy. Saves me having to beat him to death with his own spine. That makes the other customers nervous. <laughs> anyway, this is Eternity, and I'm Athena, a sorry matriarch and bartender. Get you anything? I don't know why she leads with the matriarch part whenever she gets mad with- or not really mad, just uh, she has a whole spiel. Also, this woman sounds like she smokes six packs a day and has seen things you wouldn't believe. You're an Asari matriarch? I thought matriarchs served as honored advisors. Right. Which I do here at this bar. <laughs> I know. Not what you'd expect. But nobody on Thessia wanted to listen to my wise counsel, so here I am. Dad was a Krogan who fought in the Rachni Wars. My mother fought in the Krogan Rebellions. I've pretty much seen it all. Well, she's heard about it all. Also, this is hilarious. Usually it's the client, you know, or the whatever patron spilling their guts to the bartender. But now the bartender's just like, here, have my life story. Your mother fought in the Krogan Rebellions? I don't know whether she fought. She scouted, sniped a few people, and blew up a couple of space stations. You know, commando stuff. She'd put the old commando leathers on for special nights with Dad. Goddess, that was embarrassing. Oh. <laughs> you said your father fought in the Rachni Wars? Yeah, when he was young. Love showing off his war scars. Krogan think they're sexy. Me, I go for asses. <laughs> I was a girl, he'd tell me about landing on this poison-filled world and stomping a Rachni queen at a muck. Scientists say all that stuff about us getting genetic material from the father is crap. Seems like I got a bit of his mouth, Well, though. that's more environmental rather than, like, genetic, you know? <laughs> Nature versus nurture. That's more the nurturing side of things. If your mother fought in the rebellions and your father was a Krogan, didn't that cause tension? They didn't meet until a few hundred years after the Turians put the boot in with the damn genophage. As far as either one knew, they were both just warriors. Dad boasted. Mom stayed quiet. Mom was a matriarch herself. Dad was near on a thousand when the truth came out. What happened when he found out? I was about a hundred, shaking my ass in some sleazy bar. They got me on the link, told me that they were gonna have it out, and made me promise to love whichever one survived. Turned out to be damn easy, since neither one did. Family, huh? What a kick in the quad. <laughs> the Krogan saying. Which is, that this story right here is something I would 100% read. Like, if they wrote a novel with that, I would read it. Like, that would be really, it would be a really interesting story, honestly. Like, her parents. <laughs> Why is a matriarch in a bar serving drinks? It's better than what most other matriarchs are doing. Look at that screw-up with Saren and his geth a few years back. Their ships were hanging bare-assed in space when Saren started <laughs> shooting. If not for you humans, we would have bought it right there. And I warned him, told people on Thessia what was coming, and they didn't want to hear it. Probably because she's, uh, not as, like, you know, woo mystical as many of the other Asari matriarchs. And, uh, what is it, like, um... I, I can't think of the correct word, but you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> what didn't they want to hear? That art and philosophy and political prowess wasn't gonna cut it. We can't go a single Asari lifetime without some big war breaking out. We need to get our daughters working earlier, not spending their wild maiden years stripping or in merc bands. When I started talking about making new mass relays ourselves, they laughed the blue up my ass. So now, I serve drinks. I don't <laughs> her story would also be really good for a variety of reasons, as we'll see later. Uh, but I like her a lot. Um, also, that's a big thing. The sir, like, or, uh, new mass relays, there's a big reason that nobody's done that. And it's stupid. <laughs> but 
it like living for nearly a thousand years? Violent. Wars break out. Colonies get destroyed. Sometimes you hear good news, like that colony on Pharaoh surviving. That's the exception, though. You find peace in whatever arms will hold you. Turian, Elcor, Hanar. Even had a pure-blood daughter. I was the father. Didn't work out. And one day you wake up. Your figure's gotten matriarchal, and everyone else is too young to remember how the Quarians looked inside those suits. It's wild. This woman is incredible. Like she just really distills things down <laughs> into very blunt sentences. Thanks for telling me about that. <laughs> That's what I'm here for, babe. Catch you anything else? <laughs> Shepard just like, <laughs> just like move her arm like, gee whiz, thanks. <laughs> Is that what I just saw? She even smiled a little. <laughs> like the painful smile of thank you for telling me your life story. It's truly fascinating, but it's hilarious that it is switching the dynamic. Just looking around. Right. Don't eat the nuts in the Red Bulls. They're for Turians and Quarians. You'll get cramps. Bye. Anyway, she comes up later. Dang, we're already freaking. I guess we could at least get it started. Let's see if I can remember where anybody is. Oh, no, I remember. If this is the best you have, I'll make do. But you're certain the neural stimulators are compatible with both my suit and Asari physiology? Aww. Absolutely. In fact, I use this model at home, sir. Oh. Do you? <laughs> and the breathing, he's like... <laughs> How lovely your scalp looks. Oh yeah, yeah. Hey, this guy. Listen, I know. What is it? I'm in the middle of an important call. I overheard you talking. Is this the data you're looking for? The Corosa Generational Archive. You found it. Thank you. My whole family has been worried. That data is irreplaceable. I didn't think I'd get it back from Nasana's corporate building. Why is this data so important, anyway? It's a genetic history for the entire Carosa family. It's used for high-level reproductive negotiations. It would be like a human pedigree, I suppose. Without it, you're bargaining from a greatly weakened position. Losing this would have hurt my family for generations, maybe even destroyed it. If this data is so important, why didn't you have backups? We did. A rival family introduced a computer virus, and our techs were sloppy. The virus destroyed all our data. I just spent a fortune getting the data recovered and reconstructed when Nasana went crazy. We live in a world of infinite data redundancy. To lose something so important because of one crazy Asari? There's your data. I hope it helps your family. You have no idea, human. I, I don't know who you are or how you got it, but thank you. Here, for your trouble. Five. Blessings be upon you. You've certainly blessed us. 500 credits. Watch. Oh, 1,500. Okay. Fairly generous. New. Yeah. Yeah. Time to go do a murder mystery. Coming up later today, we release our annual list of Ilium's ten It's so weird. Still it's so and weird being back in Ilium, honestly. Trust me, the goods coming in from the Terminus systems are great for business. I don't know. Some of them seem dangerous. That's the whole point. Danger means more contract work for us. Oh, wait. We gotta go over here and listen to some of the... You're sure gateway weapons and armor are good enough for Eclipse? Yeah, I've got a friend in Eclipse. She told me what I needed to get. Good. I'm pretty good at bypassing firewalls. Maybe they're looking for techs. Can I help you with something? Oh, is this that? Oh, okay. I talked to an old friend, Conrad Werner. You told him that the Eternity Lounge was selling red sand. Oh, you're Conrad's friend. Yes, that place is really dangerous. I should know. I'm an undercover cop. Did you get me the deed to the bar? I need the deed to, uh, stop the red sand dealers. Ah, uh, this woman. <laughs> Does she really? Does she look at, okay, look at Conrad, right? And you're like, I can dupe him. You look at me, and the men with me, and you think you can dupe me? 
I softened up the bar on her, but you need to go in and finish them off. Really? Are you sure? Absolutely. You just need to close the deal. Go in, be tough, and let them know you're with me. They'll hand the deed right over. Wow, great. Here, I'll set you up for a discount. Thanks for the help. <laughs> she has no idea. <laughs> Ooh, yes, maybe. Ooh, mm -hmm. Those ones are ugly, I don't like them. I can get. Oh, jeez. I can't remember which ones I really need at the moment. Sure. We can use this. Why are you yelling at me? Do the talking thing. Oh, blue rose of Ilium. Oh, this guy. <laughs> Let your roots dig deep into the hot soil. <laughs> Let our scorching sun and sheeting rain turn your supple beauty into strength. <laughs> For if our love is to survive, it must grow thorns to pierce the hand of any that would uproot it. <laughs> what do you want? <sighs> Sorry. Sorry, that damn Krogan's love poems are getting on my nerves. The Krogan's reading those love poems to get your attention? His name is Char. We're kind of dating, but, well, we're on a break. And he's trying to show me how sensitive he is by, well, wooing me. It's really bad. He's trying. It doesn't seem common for a sorry to date Krogan. What brought you two together? He's a fun guy, really smart. Especially for a Krogan. And he's got a good job as a transport technician. It's fun to join a mercenary guild or dance at bars for a few centuries, but eventually you hit the matron stage, you know? Mm. And you get your back tattoo removed, let your scalp go back to its natural blue, and settle down with someone dependable. She sounds not enthused. So why are the two of you on a break? He's serious. Serious, as in talking about kids. Char is a great guy to date, but for something permanent... He seems Krogan's sweet. long lives. It's not like dating a human where you just stick it out for a century till they die. Uh, no offense. <laughs> it made me wonder if he really likes me, or if he just wants kids. He can't have That's them fair. Way, you know, because of the genophage. And it is, it's not like she would be able to, she wouldn't have Krogan, she would have Asari children, but they would be his children too. She's not Krogan. But if he wants kids, this is the best way to go about it. I, that's true. I hadn't really thought about that. That sounds like a question you should ask him. I did. I don't think he realized that our kids would always have been Asari. Mm -hmm. Non-Asari don't always get that we're not taking alien DNA. We're just using it to randomize some of the genetic information. Anyway, Char was quiet for a long time. Then he said that he'd love our girls no matter what color they were. Which makes me cry, because it's like, not like, it's not just kids, right? Like, you know, I mean, they're technically monogender, they're not actually female, technically, I guess. Um, but, um, there's, they're generally gendered as women, and so it's, like, really sweet that he, like, thought about it, like, he thought about it really well, and he wasn't just like, oh, I'll keep, you know, I'll love our kids. He said, girls specifically, because that's what they'd have. <laughs> I just think that's really sweet. <laughs> you need to talk to your boyfriend. He's just gonna keep shouting poetry until you do. I know, but it's tough. I like him a lot. Hell, I love him. But I don't know if he's permanent bond material. Honestly, it's weird to me that I inter that I interject myself into <laughs> these sorts of things. <laughs> but especially the older I get, the more I'm like, this is weird. <laughs> this is some weird. <laughs> like the whole dang it. And I'm so mad I missed it in Mass Effect 1 uh, this time around. But especially the like vaccine argument that you get in, Ma in Mass Effect 1 that we hear a little bit about in Mass Effect 2. And I'm just like, eh. But no, this does actually play out in a really heartbreakingly beautiful way. Look at him. He's obviously crazy about you. Is he? I mean, what if he just wants to have kids? Am I just his baby-making machine? He said I wasn't, but... If he said that, then you either trust him so you have nothing to worry about, or you don't, and you've already decided. Is he? I, I guess I hadn't thought about it like that. And I do trust him, if he said it. I'm going to talk to him. Here, I've given you a discount at the terminal. Thanks for the help. 
Here, Miss Me Shepherd, the um uh don't I'm just the permanent uh advice giver extraordinaire. I'm gonna oh yeah. Okay. I gotta save up two more level ups. We go with champion. When we get there. Isn't this... Um, I think these two are supposed to talk. Maybe that's in Mass Effect 3. I think it's in Mass Effect 2. Yeah, Paddlefish! Oh, yes! The Alliance Cruiser! Yes! The Athabasca Class Fighter! Yes! Perfect. More ships to add to my collection. I don't want to do that right now. Well, I just looked over and saw the recording acting a little glitchy. So I am going to end this episode here, which is actually pretty good timing. It's a little short, but after this, we will go over there, across the hallway, and we will go start investigating a murder mystery and an Asari Justicar. So, thank you all so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Uh, and I want to say thank you to my patrons, to all of them, but to specifically my sapling tier patron, Lee Scalito. Thank you so much for your support. And an extra special shout out to Christopher, who is my tree tier patron and who is the bestest. Thank you so, so much, you guys, for your support. And uh, thank you, everyone, again. And I will see you in the next one.